Hey guys, and welcome to another Walk-In Wednesday. I actually did have a gun walk-in this past Wednesday. It happens to be the last one on the table. Uh, it is a Navy Radom, and it's a very rare gun, uh, but it kind of spurred me to do a, a, a bigger educational video on Third Reich Navy guns. But before I get started, I want to do a shout out to Don in Oklahoma. Uh, Don is a uh, subscriber and a loyal fan. Uh, he actually had a collection of Lugers that he sent to Legacy Collectibles for appraisal, and we ended up buying his collection from him. Thank you, Don. And also Tim, his son-in-law, drove all the way from Oklahoma to Philadelphia area uh, in order to bring those guns, so thank you very much. We always appreciate it when our viewers uh, share their guns with us, both serial numbers, but also a lot of you have been sending us guns to sell for you, so thank you for that. Hey, let's talk about some Navy, uh, Navy pistols from the Third Reich. Now, when I, when I talk about Navy, let me back up a bit and just say all of the armed forces in World War II, and by the way, I'm only doing World War II. Here's a World War I Luger. It has the extended barrel. I'm going to say it's six inches, but it's five and something. But um, this Navy Luger is from the World War I era. And I did a video on Lugers, and I talked about this Navy Luger, and it has a four-inch barrel, um, kind of like this one, has a four-inch barrel. And somebody wrote to me and said something along the lines of, you must be stupid. Um, all the navies have a longer barrel. World War I navies have the longer barrel. I'm going to do a separate video on World War I Lugers, so stay tuned for that. Uh, this video is going to be on World War II, um, actually World War II Navy guns, um, but in particular the World War II Luger. So let me just briefly touch on uh, collectability. I always uh, am somewhat afraid to do this because everybody has their personal preferences. But as a general rule, so for example, people, some people only collect American stuff, and so therefore uh, this is less, uh, Nazi guns are less collectible. But for other people, Nazi guns are more collectible. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to give a value judgment on that. I'm just going to say in terms of overall collectability, Navy guns are slightly more collectible because they're rarer. And a lot of people have like a personal affinity to the Navy. So, so for example, my father was in the Navy. I, I would love to have a World War II Navy, and I do. Um, and some of that is just uh, the, the nostalgia of my dad being in the Navy. Um, but in the American theater, uh, we know that uh, 1911 Colts were issued to the Navy. The early ones, only the early ones, will have a slide that is marked U.S. Navy. But for the most part, and certainly through all of World War II, the Navy guns were not specially marked. And for most of the countries, Navy guns are not specially marked. Fortunately for us, uh, we still can have access to the serial numbers for the American guns. Uh, there are several websites uh, that go over cold serial numbers, and they will tell you if it went to the Navy or the Marine Corps or the Air Corps. Collectability, commercial guns tend to bring less. So commercial uh, Lugers uh, versus commercial 1911s bring a little less. Anything military issued uh, usually commands a slight premium. And then anything that goes to a special branch of service, such as the Navy, the Air Force, and then especially um, uh, elite troops, such as Navy SEALs or SS guns. Those are the most highly collectible, meaning they're the most expensive and the most sought after. So I've organized the table in, in a sequence of uh, most common to least common. And, uh, and actually the word uh, common Navy is an oxymoron, like military intelligence. It, there, there is no such thing as a common Navy. Uh, these are just, uh, the production numbers were higher. We're, so we're going to start with Lugers on this end of the table and go all the way down to the to Navy Radom. This first one, you've actually seen before because I, when I did the uh, video on the Graf Spee, uh, great video. If you want to check that one out, you'll see below that there's a link if you want to see the uh, Graf Spee. But I showed this K-8 uh, Navy Luger. This is uh, the rarest of the World War II navies when it comes to Lugers uh, because the K-8 uh, was made in 1934. Uh, you see the K at the top and the uh, S-42 is the Mauser code. Um, so this was made in the Mauser factory in 1934. Uh, this gun has the Navy Eagle, Eagle M. Now you'll see that Eagle M again, uh, but it's, it's a, a droop wing Eagle M. 
And you'll notice, even though this is 1934, there is no swastika on this symbol. So I need to do a little bit of a sidebar about the Nazi Navy. Uh, it was led by Admiral Dönitz, of course, and the Navy, by and large, was less sympathetic to the Nazi party. Um, they had less members. They were the last to, to uh, take the Pledge of Allegiance to Hitler himself instead of pledging to Germany. Uh, Hitler commanded all the troops to pledge allegiance to him personally. The Navy was among the last ones to actually do that. They were among the last ones to add the swastika to their uh, symbol and to their flags. Um, Dernitz kind of drug his feet a little bit. And the other thing about Dernitz being really smart, uh, he lasted the whole war. Uh, he kept low, he laid low. You know, the most famous uh, Nazis were, of course, Hitler, Himmler, Goering, and uh, Goebbels. And we think of them in terms of line of succession. And yet, when Hitler killed himself, who became the leader of uh, Germany? It was Dönitz, Admiral Dönitz from the Navy. So he was the last man standing, and I think it's because he kind of laid low, kept his ha head down, was not ambitious in terms of taking over anything in the Nazi party. That's just a sidebar. I'm sure a lot of you will have comments disagreeing with me, but that's just a personal observation. So the K-8, uh, the Navy symbol, by the way, the M is always uh, on the sim at the bottom of the symbol. Uh, that's true for World War I and World War II. You see that M, which stands for Marine, um, the German word for Navy. Uh, this one in particular is uh, extremely desirable because you will see that it has two matching magazines. And again, I showed this before. I'm, I'm so proud of this. This will never leave my, my uh, collection. I have been offered wild amounts of money for this gun. It's probably the only one in existence. Um, German Navy, uh, Nazi Navy, 1934, two matching mags, but they make things even better. Um, you can see that the holster is al also matching. You see the O, which stands for Otzi. I'm going to say a little bit about that. You can see the O on the front grip strap, which is the property mark of this particular Navy. Each gun uh, had a uh, property number. Uh, so this is gun number 1750 and it has a matching holster. It is dated 1934, and you can also see the same drop wing eagle M on the holster. So that symbol for the K-date in 1934, you're gonna see again when we look at other guns from 1934. So this is an extremely rare uh, find. Finding a K-date Navy with no matching mag is rare enough. Um, how many were made? Uh, of the K-date, there were 200 made. Uh, 10,000 K-dates total, only 200 were issued to the Navy. Let's move right along to the G-date. Um, now the G-date, I, I, I like to call this, uh, this symbol the funky chicken. Because they went from that nice uh, droop wing eagle and 1935, the G-date is 1935. This is the Navy marking from 1935. I've seen several of them. If I hadn't seen several, I would think that this was, you know, this is like fake news. Uh, this can't be real. Um, it doesn't look like an eagle. It's a funky looking chicken uh, with an M. And again, 1935, no swastika. The N property mark is Nordsea. You do see on the bottom of the magazine, it has the N property mark. Now this is not, this is not matching. So this is not a matching number magazine, um, but it is North Sea marked. So uh, bear in mind, when you see a Navy Luger, anything from North Sea will have the property mark on the magazine. Anything from the Ot Sea has the serial number, but no no O property mark. It's just a minor detail, but kind of watch out for that because I have seen some fakes where they put the O property mark on the magazine. They didn't do that Otzi versus Nordsi. Now let me, again, sidebar, get a little bit of history. And you don't pay any extra for this. Um, Otzi is East Sea, which is uh, the Baltic naval base, and that's in Kiel. So Kiel, Germany, all the way up north to the east, you can see on the map, it's on the Baltic Sea. However, closer to the open ocean uh, and, and preferable for, um, for German ships getting out to sea quickly uh, is North Sea, which is the Wilhelmshaven uh, Navy base. And I believe, you can again, correct me if I'm wrong, 
Uh, I believe that's the larger of the two. Uh, a lot of the submarines were stationed out of the North Sea. Now, bear in mind, obviously, some of you are going to say there are other Navy bases. Yes, as the Germans, they, their real goal was get a, a port out on the Atlantic just because it gets them out into the open ocean. Uh, the submarines in particular could get out into the open seas more quickly, as opposed to when they, whether they went through the uh, Baltic or out through the North Sea, um, they could be cut off. Um, you know, the, the, all you have to do is set up your, your ships along that breakout point, and they could stop the submarines before they hit the open ocean. Of course, when they took France and also Denmark, they opened up other Navy bases. So these were not the only two, but these were the two largest Navy bases of the Third Reich. Now, I have uh, one more style of Navy uh, Luger, but before I move on, I want to point out this funky chicken. Uh, I never saw it any place else, but I have this orphan mag. Um, this or uh, I call it an orphan mag because it's numbered but did not go to a gun. I, I bought it by itself, uh, and it goes to a 1934, I believe, 1934 Mauser. Um, but check, uh, check out this uh, Mauser magazine. It has, I'll hold them side by side. Check out the funky chicken on that. So orphan mag, you know it's not fake. It's got the end property mark. Um, and it's got the same funky chicken. So this we know came from 1935. Again, no swastika, but a Navy marking. And by the way, those are the most difficult to understand. If you didn't catch it all, watch it again. But these are the most common from 1936, so 34, 35, starting in 1936 all the way to about 1940, uh, they marked the, the uh, Lugers very simply. Uh, there was no na uh, Navy Eagles on this gun. Uh, this one happens to be 1938, which is the most common date for Nazi Navy. Um, there's no, nothing um, different. It has the same Waffen stamps on the right-hand side. This is uh, Eagle 63, same Waffen stamp, same, uh, same Mauser marking, uh, dated. The only difference is the O property mark is on the front grip strap. And remember, the magazine will not have the O property mark. So the only thing that makes this Navy is the O property mark. We know it went to the North Sea. So um, again, from 36 to about 1940, uh, 40, they stopped marking. It's going to be either N, N property marked or O property marked. The N property mark, if it's got a matching mag, the, uh, the same N property mark will be on the bottom of the magazine. The O property mark, they didn't number them. And that was, uh, by the way, these were marked at the Naval Arsenal. Uh, they were not done at the factory. So when they were ordered, they went to, uh, they went to the Navy arsenal uh, where they were marked on the front and on the uh, magazine and also these, um, the Funky Chicken and the K-Date Eagle. That was all done at the Naval arsenal, not at the factory. That's my understanding and it's uh, pretty much been verified by other collectors. Now this, this 1938, uh, came in this beautiful holster. Again, the holster, there's no difference between this and any other Luger holster, except when you look on the back, you see the Eagle and the M. And, um, and by the way, around this time, this one's dated 1939. You can barely see it, but right under the Eagle is the swastika. So it is a Nazi marked Eagle with the M underneath. So this is a naval issued holster, um, 1939 with a 1938 Luger. So that's an overview of Nazi era Lugers that went to the uh, German Navy. Are there others that went to the Navy? Probably, but because there are no records, unlike Colt, uh, where we have the records, uh, at, the, at the end of the war, the Nazis burned, destroyed all their records because they didn't want the Allies to be able to look up which, gun, which guns were issued to who, assuming that um, people would come looking for them at the end of the war. So they destroyed all their records. I believe that after 1940, of course, the Navy ordered more Lugers, but at that point, the war was heating up. Uh, they were running out of time and materials. And so it's my personal belief that um, they no longer marked them because they were just shipping them and, get, and issuing them and getting them out um, as quickly as they could. They didn't bother with the extra markings, that's my opinion. Um, but they still were certainly ordering Lugers and other guns after 1940. 
Let's go to the middle section. These are all Mausers, and Mauser did send a lot of guns to the Third Reich Navy. Um, and the first one that I come up with, and it's actually surprising, this is pretty rare, because this is a model 1914. Now, again, as an aside, some of you are gonna learn something new, no extra charge. Uh, the difference between a 1914, a model 1914, and a model 1934 is, look at the, um, Look at the hump on the grip. What hump? The 1914 um, has just a really small hump. Uh, but then for creature comfort, the, 19, the model 1934, the major difference is the hump right here. Surprisingly, there, a model 1914 um, has a Navy Eagle on it. Now, take a look at that Navy Eagle and tell me where you've seen that before. Bingo. That's right. It is the 1934-style uh, Nazi Navy Eagle, same as you find on a K-date. So these early guns, uh, what they considered between, uh, it's, it's not even Weimar period, because remember, 1934, Hitler came to power in 33, uh, but it's before they came out with the Nazi Eagle, which we're going to see in a minute. Um, you can see that they had the K-date, and then later the G-date Eagle, are seen on these guns. You can also see that this one has two matching magazines. If you look at the bottom, these are O property marked. You see the O property mark on the front grip strap, and then you see it on both um, magazines. There's also an X, which means extra. So this is the number one mag. This would be the number two mag that has the X on it. Uh, two matching mags on this model 1914, which went to the Third Reich Navy. The holster, uh, this is a Navy style holster. If you take a good look at it, just kind of study that a bit. It's the same style holster and I, I see many of these. This one has a very interesting Navy marking on the inside. It has the same style eagle from 1934 and again, no swastika. But that's, this is a very rare holster that goes with this gun to make a complete rig. Now let's quickly go to the model 1934. It has the same K-8 style, so 1934 Navy marking. This one has the O property mark on the front strap. This one also has two matching magazines. Pretty straightforward. And this uh, should come with a Navy marked holster. I didn't have one in hand. I actually just sold one off the website. Um, but uh, the, the, Navy, the Navy holsters are just a standard holster like this, but we'll have a Navy stamp. Usually it's under, under this flap. It'll be right here. Um, and sometimes it is on the toe and sometimes it's on the back. So when you find a holster like that, if it has a Navy marking, it uh, more than triples the price of the holster. So watch out for that. Remember, Navy equals collectability. Let's go to the Nazi era. Now, technically, we were in the Nazi era, obviously, but the eagle changes. Notice, this is a 1934. See the hump? Uh, beautiful gun. It has an open wing Nazi eagle M. And so that is, this is probably the most common Navy marking found on the 1934. So I've sold dozens of these on the site. Um, they sell for over $2,000, but they are navy marked, and it is what they call the open wing versus the closed wing. And you can see right away why one would be called the open wing Nazi eagle and the closed wing Nazi eagle. The closed wing, uh, you can see that it has an O property mark, Otzi, and I believe that is a ma matching magazine on, on the bottom. Now, they, have, they made both O property marks and N property marks. You can see the difference. The N on the front strap is um, horizontally written and the N is above the number and they all look like that. And then on the O property mark, they are uh, vertical and you can see that the O and the, num and the property mark are in line. Those are just little details you want to pay attention to if you're looking for these. Again, because this little marking Adds to the price, they are faked. Uh, you have to be very careful. They were added after the blue, so after it left the factory, it was added on by the arsenal, and therefore, for somebody to get 
uh, one that's not marked and to put that mark on there. It doesn't take a whole lot of talent to do that, so be very careful. Uh, certainly contact us if you have questions because there are serial ranges that are, um, that are typical and there are also some other things that we watch out for uh, in order to make sure they're real. Um, but these are real. And by the way, they're real oh. and they're spectacular. <laughs> Moving right along on the table, after the model 1914 and the model 1934, remember that's not the date they were made, but after these models came the HSC, which was an improvement. And they did order these for the Navy. Uh, another quick sidebar, I have had two of these that were documented to have been captured from a submarine captain. Uh, when the captain surrendered the ship at the end of the war, uh, he turned in his uh, sidearm and it was uh, a Nazi marked eagle on the front strap. These are all closed wing. There are no open wing HSCs. Uh, these will be closed wing and they are always on this front strap, sometimes up high, sometimes right in the middle. Um, but um, they're right, they're found right here, and there are no O or N property marks. So I've never seen an HSC that had an N or O property mark, so it should just be that really cool looking Nazi eagle. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's okay to say a Nazi eagle looks cool, but when you're buying a gun with that marking on it, it adds, it adds value. Uh, let me do this one first, because this one comes with a very interesting holster. You can see on the inside it is marked Mauser 7.65, which is the caliber of all of the Mausers. The, the uh, Lugers are all 9 millimeter. The Mausers are all 7.65 or 32 caliber. Uh, this holster, you will notice, has the Navy marking. It's, um, it's a stick wing eagle. It has the swastika. It has the M. It has the spare magazine. But again, HSC, the magazine, would not be Navy marked, and it's not. Uh, but it also is, was made in Kiel, so I thought that was kind of cool. So this probably went to Otzi, which is the Kiel Navy base. Most likely went to Otzi, but would not be marked as such. Instead, it has a closed wing eagle right here on the front strap. Beautiful looking gun. These are relatively early. 700,000 range is an early gun. You can see that it's the early high polish and it has the uh, lanyard in the back of the frame, which later went away. They simplified that, did away with the lanyard. Let's take a look at the next HSC. It also is fairly early, but this one is later 700. So this is 780,000. And you can see that it has the closed wing eagle and it has the lanyard in the back. Um, there is one more variation, very interesting. This one um, has both Navy markings. If you look on the trigger guard, there is a variation of closed wing eagle um, that does not have this large Nazi eagle on the front, but instead it has a little tiny M property mark right here on the trigger guard. You have to look really careful to see it, and these, these uh, sneak up on you, meaning um, people, people will advertise these on auctions or on gun broker and says has a little marking on the trigger, and they don't know what it is. You can barely see it. If I look under a magnifying glass, it's an M. It is an eagle with an M and I believe a 113. I can never make out the 113, but all you need to know is the M. The eagle M is Navy. So um, sometimes they don't have this at all, but instead just have this marking. This one has both markings, which is in transition. It went from transition of the front marked to the trigger guard marked. Uh, this one is marked in both spots, so it's, it's fairly rare. But that, that's a treasure that sometimes, you, nobody ever misses this eagle, in other words, but people do miss that eagle. Okay, finally, we saved the best for last. This is one that you guys have been waiting for because it is a mythical beast. If you've ever heard of the mythical radum that went to the uh, Navy, this would be it. Extremely rare. I believe they only made a couple hundred. They're always early, meaning no suffix. If you look at the serial number, it, they are found in the no suffix range and sometimes a suffix range. So um, there, there are only about 200 of these made and they're very, very rare. Um, first of all, I should go back and say all of these um, are rare. I, I remember I said there's no such thing as a common Navy. 
um, probably 70% of them are in the bottom of the Atlantic because the Third Reich Navy, uh, their surface vessels were taken out pretty early and sunk. Um, we saw that with the Graf Spee, by the way, um, but uh, a lot of their uh, battleships, most of them actually were sunk. And then, of course, the submarines, they relied heavily on submarines. We know some of these were issued to submarines. Many of those were sunk. So the vast majority are at the bottom of the Atlantic. And so even though they made um, probably a couple hundred of these, very few survived. So this is an early, high polish, uh, no prefix radum. I did an entire video on the development of the radum. In Poland, they call it the viz. Um, and several Polish people corrected me on that. In the United States, we call it the radum. In European countries, particularly Poland, they call it the viz. You can see that on the grip panel. Uh, but if you go to that video, you will see the whole development. What's the difference between an early radum and a late radum? Watch that video and you'll find out. Now, the marking on this, which is just uh, uh, <laughs> by now you're very familiar with, right here is the open wing, stick wing, Nazi Navy Eagle. So it has the Nazi marking, it has the stick wing Eagle, and it has the M property mark. Again, uh, well, I've held three of these. I know this one is real because I know from whence it came. Um, I know one of the ones I held was fake uh, because we were able to track that down and see that it once did not have a marking and now it does. So we know that one was fake. I've only seen two that are most likely real and I know one was a fake. There's others that show up on auctions. I just um, haven't held them in hand because I could tell by looking at them that they weren't right. And again, the serial number is early. Um, interestingly, on the navies, the lanyard loop is missing. I don't know if it was re removed or never put on, but the navies don't have the lanyard loop. And most of the time, the ejection port is blued. On most of the navies, and I say that in that if you watch the video about uh, radums, you will see that I, I, the, the ejection ports are usually in the white, um, but most of the navies are blued. This one, it's kind of hard to tell. It's a little bit corroded. Maybe somebody wiped it off. Um, I can't say for sure, but I don't doubt the authenticity of this particular radum navy. Now, if we look at the front strap, you see the N property mark. And again, you see it uh, listed vertically with the N above the property mark. And the property mark is number 200. So this was the 200th. I actually have seen N, I think it was number one. Uh, sometimes it's just a blank N. I've never seen a, a zero property mark, um, but I have seen the ones that I've seen and the ones that are in the books. If you go to Jan Stills books on Axis pistols, uh, you will see a property mark on the front or an N on the front. And this one has a matching magazine. Imagine the rarity of that. But if you look at the bottom of the magazine, you can see it is N200 with the X means this was the second mag. The first one is lost to history. At least we think so. If you happen to have it, let us know. Um, and if you happen to uh, own one of these or know of one of these, please let us know. We'd like to update our records. Uh, if you're contemplating buying one, please be very, very careful on all of these. Uh, because they are very rare and they're not that hard to fake. So it takes a lot of research to verify that the gun is real. So are there any other guns issued to the Navy? I already mentioned that, you know, up until 1940, they marked them special. I'm sure the Navy had to have ordered guns after that. I mean, they were still making submarines all the way through all of 1944. Not sure about 45, but they were making submarines at that point and they had to be ordering more guns. So I think after 1940, they just didn't bother marking them anymore. Uh, again, uh, I, I solicit your comments uh, if, if you have done any research on Third Reich navies. Um, but they had to have ordered guns. How do we know if they went to the Navy? We really don't. There are, there are early radums that have no lanyard and blued. And I, I, I tell people it could have gone to the Navy, but I can't say for sure. Uh, I already mentioned other Lugers probably went to the Navy. Also, uh, they're in books or in um, collections. I have seen a CZ-27 with a Navy marking. Only saw one. I doubt that it's real. 
I also saw a Femaru. Uh, most of the, uh, those contracts all went to the Luftwaffe. So I saw a Femaru that should have gone to the Luftwaffe because the entire contract went to the Luftwaffe, and yet it had a Navy Eagle on it. So I also believe that one was fake. Anytime you see a, a, a Third Reich marking on a gun that's not one of these, I would be very suspicious. And as always, contact Legacy Collectibles. We'd be glad to talk through that with you and help you out as much as we possibly can. Hey, I hope you learned something today. I, you know, this is very interesting, especially when you have a father who is in the Navy. And many of you out there served in the Navy as well. Thank you for your service. Uh, these are interesting collector guns. And make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and tell a friend about it because we would really like to build our subscriber base.